No, I don't waste no time What's going on guys and welcome to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel. My name is Joshua Daniel George. It is currently Sunday evening. I have uh, the group coaching call in about 30 minutes from now. Um, so I've got 30 minutes to spare. I'm already, my to-do list is all boxed off. So I thought I'd just record a quick video for you guys. And uh, usually I don't wear a cap. Um, and obviously this is the, the quarantine stubble. But um, obviously, you know, everyone is in the same situation now. I am uh, badly in need of a haircut, as you can see. So uh, wearing the cap, uh, you know, just to protect uh, you guys basically from having to look at that uh, for the remainder of the video. But anyway, uh, like I said, I thought I'd just record this quick video and explain some Facebook ads myths that I thought were true and that I see a lot of people um, basically, you know, using as guidelines when that is no longer the case or not true at all um so like i said you know these are mistakes that i have made in the past as well well most of them apart from one um and you know it's basically something that i just want to put out there just so you guys know and can take into consideration when you guys are running ads and the first one and this this i'm, I'm gonna be honest here this is what was one that i stuck to for a very long time and i was convinced that this was true it is true in a way, but um, basically I have found out through trial and error myself, speaking to a lot of people, um, you know, in terms of media bias, a lot of experts that I do hold in high regard. Uh, for example, Aaron Kaiser, um, he's actually new to YouTube. Now he's uh, posting a lot of very good content on his YouTube channel. Um, so, you know, if you haven't subscribed to his channel yet, make sure you check his stuff out. I watch almost every single video of his. I know him personally, and he is an expert when it comes to Facebook ads. And he was, so, he was also one person that basically mentioned this to me as well. Um, and without beating around the bush for too long, it's basically the myth of having to run traffic campaigns before you can run a conversion campaign. So usually when you have a brand new ad account, um, what I used to do was uh, run traffic to the website first. So a, just a generic traffic campaign. Why? Just to what I thought was what I was doing was seasoning the pixel, um, you know, gathering data and uh, generating data, you know, for the pixel. So the pixel knows who to retarget etc and obviously to see uh, what kind of traffic converts and which uh, audience or you know doesn't or does not um, and yes this was the case this used to be the case for a very long time but now with the amount of data that Facebook has and how you know uh, basically how how much data facebook has been able to generate and their self-learning algorithms etc this is no longer needed and no longer the case so you can run a conversion campaign from moment one even if it is a clean ad account a fresh pixel everything um you know is completely new you can run conversion ads from moment one now with that said, Facebook will still need to go through a learning phase. So when you set up a complete new um, you know, account, a complete new campaign, and for example, you uh, optimize for add to cart, Facebook will say, listen, you've got no add to cart, so we're not really sure what kind of people will optimize for this. And that is just more of a guideline, just so you know, okay, you know, give Facebook a few days and they will learn who or what kind of audience will add to cart, okay? So myth number one is that you need to run traffic campaign first before you can run a conversion campaign. That is no longer the case. And another mistake that I made in the past and another myth that I still see a lot of people religious sticking to is that you need to hyper target um, a specific audience and we see all these gurus on Facebook saying you need laser targeted audiences and hyper focused uh, audience segments etc guys Facebook is much much smarter than us and the algorithm the self-learning algorithm of Facebook knows much better than we do who you know they need to target and i've actually seen a lot of uh, like studies and researchers done to this uh, and basically what facebook now do is they only take into consideration 10 percent of what we say so what i mean by that is if you run a advertisement campaign and you say okay i want facebook to target this specific audience facebook will basically consider that and take 10 percent of what you say 
and 90% of what they do it will come from their own experience and their own data and targeting, etc. So if you give them a laser targeted audience of let's say a thousand people, you know, people with a specific shoe size and that eat chicken on specific days of the week, then you know you're basically just limiting the amount of reach that Facebook can basically use. So the way it works is you give Facebook an audience. Facebook will take that into consideration, use a pocket of that specific audience that you select. So let's say you give them an audience of 1 million, they'll take 10% of that 1 million, look and see if that interest um, that you've basically used or mentioned is worth targeting. If it's not, Facebook will just go out and do their own thing, okay? So if you give them an extremely small audience of a thousand people, then you know Facebook are going to take 10% of that, and if they see that there's not a lot of uh, traction there, then they just won't use your audience. Okay, and speaking of audience, myth number three is that it is all about the audience. And you know, a lot of people, when I, for example, I post screenshots of successful campaigns, or I mention a successful campaign either in the coaching or in the, the free Facebook group, a lot of people ask me, who did you target? You know, what was your target? What audience interest did you use, etc.? And this, again, is some kind of myth because it's not always about the targeting and it's not always about what kind of interest you select when you're running a campaign. More often than not, you will actually have to build your own uh, audience you know over over time and from scratch you need to warm up a specific audience segment to get them from you know not knowing who you are and not knowing anything about your company to becoming a, a, a buyer or someone that has made that purchase decision so more often than not you'll notice that over time that audience will develop and it's not necessarily a specific audience with a specific interest obviously that is a great place to start but you'll notice that the lookalike audience of people that have purchased in the past or people that have been retargeted for the fifth time, for example, are your ideal audience, okay? So try and understand that it might not be a specific segment or a specific interest, but that it's the audience that you create over time. Okay, so that was myth number three. And myth number four is one that I have not really made myself, but I see a lot of people make. And also when we do client outreach, it's one of the most common objections that we get is that Facebook is not relevant for B2B or that LinkedIn is better for B2B than Facebook is because people on Facebook are generally just more relaxed or looking at cat videos rather than actually looking into business opportunities and guys this is not true and actually with that said I have noticed that for a lot of our clients we get a higher return on ad spend for service-based businesses as opposed to e-com stores so when it comes to e-com stores usually the return on ad spend on a large scale will be, to, be between anywhere from three to six that is on average and um, six is obviously you know if you're doing really well and everything converts two to three is usually what we would get in terms of results um, like I said, on a larger scale, it's easy to get a 25x return on ad spend if you've got one pages with $5 spend. But I'm talking about on larger scale, usually the return on ad spend will be, be between two and like I said, six for the high converting stores. But with that said, for lead generation clients, it's actually much easier to get a higher return on ad spend because usually the service that they're providing is you know, of a much higher worth and the profit margin for them is much higher. For example, for one of our dentist clients, we've got an ad budget of 500 pounds. And every single, well, basically, you know, every single time we get him a dental implant customer, he basically gains 6,000 pounds a tooth. So if this guy wants an entire, uh, you know, new set of teeth, he is going to be spending a lot of money with this dentist. So the return on ad spend for him is very, very big. Now, all we need to do is basically get him one customer that have to replace one tooth and he's already got a 12X return on ad spend. And that, like I said, that is one customer. We are getting him like 50, 60 leads, qualified leads, all for dental implants every single month. So like I said, for B2B, it will definitely work. And just think like people that own businesses, people that are on LinkedIn, people that use social media are also human beings and they also have a personal life and they also have downtime. It's not that people that own businesses are only on LinkedIn. That is not the case, okay? These people are on Facebook as well. These people have a, like I said, a social life, a private life. All you need to do is know how to find them. And with that said, like Facebook's targeting and Facebook's data and Facebook's algorithms are much smarter than that of LinkedIn because they've got more data to work with. So Facebook can 
actually find the exact people that you need to find. All you need to do is set it up correctly. And last but not least, because we do have to finish off soon because of the coaching call, is that if you don't get results for your clients, it is your fault or that it's on the front end, it's a mistake with the ads. And that is not always the case, okay? I have run literally the best, most comprehensive campaigns for clients in the past, but if there's something wrong with their store, if there's something wrong with their checkout page, if the price of the product is too high, then they just will not get purchases, okay? And it's not necessarily your fault. So you need to look at the entire flow, not just at the front end, not just look at how are your ads performing, what is the click-through rate like, but just look at the whole store as a whole, look at the whole buyer experience. People will always still purchase with logic, okay? It's like someone walking into the store, you can have the best offer, but if, you know, your pin machine or you know if if the register the cash register doesn't work then they can't make that purchase okay if the for example if there's a massive line outside or if the outside of the shop doesn't look nice then people won't make that purchase and the same goes for online you, know, you might have the best running ads and the best converting product or the best uh, the product with the most potential but if your loading speed is dreadful then people won't make that purchase because people are too impatient. And like I said, if the checkout page doesn't work properly, if there's an additional shipping that they didn't know about, they'll feel hard done by and they won't make that purchase. So look at the entire store as a whole, not just think that, you know, because the ads aren't getting purchases, that it's your fault, okay? So that is the last myth. Like I said, I do need to head off soon. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please leave it with a thumbs up and leave a comment down below what you'd like to see from this channel next. I'm gonna now hop onto that coaching call. If you want to be on the next coaching call or if you want me to take you on as a personal coaching client and work on your agency and help you build out that agency to six figures and beyond, all you need to do is click on that link in the description box down below. We can hop on a quick call, see if it's a right fit for each other. If we are, then I'll offer you the coaching program and we can move forward from there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.